Hello! So, this evening we are going to take a look at the Just Flight Avro Vulcan in Microsoft Flight Simulator. We're going to do the basics to start the aircraft up. So, I have been doing my homework on this and I've managed to whittle down the things you absolutely have to do from the default start configuration of the aircraft. So, if you've got state saving switched on, this probably won't work because the aeroplane will be however you left it. But if you have it in the default start configuration, I'm going to give you a very kind of concise procedure to start the aircraft up. It doesn't involve too much jumping around the cockpit, or at least it shortens it where it can. So let's go and jump inside the cockpit and see what we need to do. So the first thing we do is go down to the tablet, and we're going to go and enable the ground power and the palust. So that's the electrical supply and the compressed air generator for the aircraft. There's no harm in them being connected immediately. And we're also going to then jump straight across to the Airborne Electrical Operator Position, or the AEO. So we're going to go over here. We're going to go and turn the master switch on for the APU, or the AAPP as it's known in the Vulcan. We're going to open the, the duct for it, and then we're going to press the start button. And you'll see the PSI and the, uh, the temperature climb. We're going to, while waiting for that, we can go down to the battery isolation switch and turn the battery on and re-cage the switch. Then we're going to go to the alternators and we're going to enable alternators 1 and 4. So that's this one and this one. Okay, so those are the alternators for the AP... Uh, sorry, the AAPP. I keep calling it the APU. Okay, so then we go back to the tablet because we want to go back to the first pilot position. So from here, we can immediately go and start turning on the oxygen systems. So to get to the other one, because it's behind this pilot, press Control 6 and turn the view, and there it is. And then come back with F. Then press Control 5 to go to the left side of the cockpit. We're going to go and turn the radio on and turn the volume up on the radio. And then back to the cockpit we're going to press B to calibrate the altimeters, press D to align any compasses that might have drifted and they usually haven't in the default state but we'll do it anyway. And then we're going to go to the fuel cocks. So I've got a, um, a view set up for this. So this is directly below the middle of the, the glare shield. So you pull each of these down, you flick the switches forwards and you re-cage them. Okay, so then we go press Control 6 to go over to the right side of the cockpit. We want to move this pressure selector, so it's best actually to try and move your view around a little bit to get to it. So we need to push it all the way to the front. Then we can, we can press Control 6 again and press it again. It will line back up with where it was. So this is one of the default views. We need to turn the external lights on and set the nav light to flash. Then we press F to come back to the main cockpit view and we want to pan over to look at the throttles and we're going to click the stalk of each throttle to lift it away from shut off to idle. Okay, then left side panel, control 5, we're going to go and get the engines ready. So we switch this switch here to rapid for the fast engine start option. We turn the master ignition switch on and the, the master switch for the starting routine itself and then we press the rapid start button. We also move the throttles to 50%. So in order to do that I've pushed my throttle levers forwards to their halfway position. So the aircraft will now come to life. I'm going to sit outside to wait for that to happen. What volume levels have we got? Oh yeah it's quite loud. You won't be able to hear me in a moment. So obviously while this is happening you can be monitoring the instruments. Okay, so when you're happy that the engines have come to life you can pull them back to idle. And we go back to the tablet, we go back to the AEO position. 
we go to the alternators at the bottom and we switch each alternator on. Now the engines are running. And then we go and press the AAPP button over here. So this means at the moment, even though we've got the alternators on, we're not using the power from them, but we're going to press AAPP. And that means we're using the power from the auxiliary power unit rather than from the engines that's being generated. And this is recommended in the, the guidance documents below 5,000 feet, basically, that you would carry on using the AAPP during takeoff and during climb out. And then once you're in cruise, you might switch over. So you, to switch over, you can press the extra supplies trip and it will switch over to using the engine supplies. OK, so we're going to go back to the tablet and go back to the first pilot position. And we're going to press control 5 and we're going to go and turn off those ignition systems. So MSW off, ignition off. And that's good. Then we go back to the centre of the cockpit. We pull the pedestal out, lift this arm out of the way. And we're going to go and switch all of the fuel pumps on. So make sure all of these switches are forwards. Okay, so they correspond with tanks around the aircraft. You'll notice there that you've got the Bombay tanks if you've got them fitted. We haven't. We're also going to pull the power for the autopilot. It takes a few seconds for it to get running and then this will switch over. It's a magnetic indicator. It will roll over and show white instead of dark. Okay, while we're waiting for that, we can press control and it's just let it look. Press control and five. And we're going to look at this section here. So this is the powered flight control section. So we're going to make sure that each of these is pulled up. Okay. We're also going to pull up these ones. And you notice they haven't gone out yet. And then we're going to press these three buttons for the powered flight controls to start the system. And you will see the field controls extinguish. Okay. Back to the pilot view, and we can remove the ejection seat pins. Then back to the aircraft tab, uh, tablet, sorry, and we can close the doors. So you see the um, indicators against them. And at this point we can remove the ground power, remove the palust, remove the chocks. And we're ready to go. So just before we do go, we need to go and put the taxi lights on. So we'll go control and six. And we switch down both of these to taxi for the port and starboard. We release the parking brake and we're ready to go. So we are at Milden Hall today. So let's just taxi out to the runway. And take this as far as takeoff. So that's it basically. Let's turn the uh, head tracking on, line it up. There we go. So if you're wondering why you're seeing US aircraft everywhere, Milden Hall is the US base in the UK. It's a B-52 over there. There's a couple of C-17s over in the distance by the look of it. Is that KC-135 we're about to go past? It's an AUX down at the end of the taxiway. Seven, but obviously modified for some sort of official use. It's got some sort of um, electronic warfare suite either side of the body. Okay. Just 
rolling out to the runway. So we'll be looking to rotate at 150 knots and then maintain pitch to hold 150 knots. So you often need a little bit of nose down on the runway until you get to 150 knots and then rotate gently. So gear can come up. So you notice we've gone straight up to about 175 knots, so we could rotate quite steeply. Which is a common thing you see the Vulcans doing. I'm just forcing the nose down, I've gone a bit slow. So then we'll be looking for about 90% throttle and lower the nose and accelerate out to 250 knots and it accelerates very quickly but that's basically it we're now in cruise so the last thing you do is you lift this lever pull this back and that puts the engines into cruise mode instead of takeoff mode and you see we're gently, even at 90% throttle, we're gently accelerating through to 250 knots. And we can continue our climbing. So let's just have a look outside. So you can see the, um, the nuclear variant of the, the Vulcan is really quite something to look at. Okay, I'm going to leave it there for today. And I'll see you again soon.